At 19 storeys high and with the capacity to hold 18,000 containers, the Maersk McKinney Moller is the largest container ship in the world. It recently arrived here at the port of Tanjong Palapas in Malaysia on its maiden commercial voyage that started in South Korea and will take it to Europe. Now the question is why has Maersk built or ordered to be built a vessel of this size? The global container industry is still in something of a slowdown. The expected uptick in container volume that Maersk expected when it ordered this vessel and indeed 19 others which are to follow just hasn't happened. Well if you look at it from an industry perspective the arrival of the triple E's uh, couldn't come at a worse time. Uh, the industry has been in crisis mode for almost five years uh, grappling with uh, volatile freight rates and overcapacity which is a legacy of uh, all the orders placed during the boom years pre-2008. Uh, so the last thing you need is more capacity coming onto the market especially on the Asia-Europe routes where it's, uh, the volatility is at its worst. The decision to order these ships at the height of the crisis in the sector in 2011 was seen as an aggressive play by Maersk at the time to try to use its strong balance sheet to outmaneuver many of its weaker rivals. The original strategy was to use them to go after more market share and push weaker players out, but the failure of the industry to recover since then and the lack of any notable consolidation has meant Maersk's management has had to think again. Well, these ships were planned and, and, and built, uh, or at least started building, uh, before the, the crisis have, have, have emerged really in, in, in South Europe and so on. So they were planned for a, for a different uh, time. That said, because they have this advantage in terms of economies of scale, low fuel consumption and so on, they still make a lot of sense. The key to this vessel lies in its name, the Triple E. New environmental specifications have helped cut carbon dioxide emissions by more than 50% per container compared with the industry average on the Asia-Europe route, which is the world's busiest. Then there is efficiency. By having two engines and two propellers instead of the more usual one, the Triple E can transport 2,500 more TEUs, or 20-foot equivalent units, than Maersk's current most efficient ships, while also using 20% less fuel. And finally, there is the sheer size of the boat, giving what Maersk calls scale economy. While it's only three meters longer than the Maersk's previous biggest ship, the Triple E can carry 16% more containers. While all this is likely to save Maersk and therefore its customers money, the ship's design and sheer size is taking some getting used to by the man responsible for getting it from point A to point B. I, I've had a lot of fun with this uh, so far because it's, it's like, like, like the engine plant, the, the way we have to maneuver these vessels are, are also quite different compared to what we're used to. We cannot just think uh, of a Triple E as a, a traditional container vessel, but also more like a, in sense of a bulk or a tanker, you have to be more careful uh, the way you maneuver it because it's more heavy. On its outbound journey to Europe, the Triple E will be delivering mostly electronic appliances, kitchenware and garments from China. On the way back, it will carry chemicals, machinery, cars and car parts on its long passage back to Singapore, eventually stopping at Chinese ports before docking in South Korea. Maersk will gradually add the other 19 Triple E's to its fleet over the next year and a half, with the full service in place by 2015. By then, the hope is that demand will be robust enough to fill these ships right up to their maximum level. For Maersk, this is of course going to be a $3.7 billion question as to when that moment comes. $3.7 billion is what the company is committed to spending on building these vessels. For Maersk, and probably also for its rivals, that moment when those vessels like the one behind me, are at full capacity, can't come soon enough. Jeremy Grant, Financial Times.